Do you ever get told you look like a celebrity? I do. I do too. All the time on the plane, I get one person. And it's just because I have dark hair and blue eyes. Ooh, say it. <laughs> it's, uh, I don't even know if it's MGK's wife or her, his girlfriend. Megan Fox. <laughs> Welcome back to another Love is Blind recap. We're going to talk about episode two of season six, and it was an amazing episode. Oh my God, if you have no idea what's going on, if you don't watch the show and only my recap, please go to my episode one recap because you're going to need to know what's going on to understand what goes on in episode two. All right, so without further ado, let's get started. We meet a few new people in this episode. We meet Jeremy, who describes himself as a very loud person, so he wants another loud, obnoxious person so that they can be loud and obnoxious together. Sounds like a nightmare. He's on a date with Laura, and she says she has undiagnosed OCD because when she's at her man's house or in the past, her previous relationships, it's always been messy. It drives her nuts. She needs a clean, organized space. And if a guy has a very messy or dirty space, she doesn't want to cuddle with him. She doesn't want to kiss him. She doesn't want to hug him. She doesn't even want to have schmecks with him. Hell no. And what she always ends up doing is being their mother and cleaning up after them or telling them what to clean up and how to clean up. And it's just been a huge problem for her. So she does not want to do that again. And she's in luck because Jeremy is also a clean freak. <laughs> Dishes have to be out of the sink before I go to bed. Yes! Like, <laughs> absolutely not. I have two robot vacuums that are running 24 seven. Shut up, that is so hot. Yep, so my house is immaculate. Her eyes light up like a Christmas tree and she's turned on. Oh my God, I've never been so turned on in my life. This is the best day ever. And they both laugh about being clean freaks. Next on the date with Jeremy is Sarah Ann. And we've seen her before when she went on the date with Matthew and she couldn't stop talking and he got really annoyed. Anyway, it seems like she's just naturally a long-winded person because I think in the men's living quarters, the guys were saying how she talks a lot and they like that. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> also, she reminds me so much of Gabby from The Bachelor. She was The Bachelorette one season with Rachel. Does anybody see the resemblance or is it just me? If we did this, who moves in with who? Ooh. I got a four bedroom house. I didn't know that. Well, I'm in an apartment. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess I'm moving in with you. He talks about how he lives in a rental house right now because he just sold his last house and he doesn't want to buy a new house until he finds a future wife so that they can buy a house together. Oh so cute so sweet and he's like I want us to be able to decorate together and buy furniture together and I want it to be our space I mean that is good news for a woman you know like we don't want to go and live in a man caves Ugh, so ugly like all the dark colors and mismatched browns and dark reds and blacks and ugh. Amy's on another date with Johnny and she tells him that her brother is on the spectrum and he's extremely important to her. And if anything were to happen to her dad, who is his legal guardian, then she would take over and take care of her brother. And she wants her future husband to accept him into their home and also accept that she's going to be a caretaker and also love him just the way she loves him. I never want that to happen. That's like my biggest fear. I never want something to happen to my brother. So, um... That's we'll like give my you a biggest right fear and like I just want my potential partner, you know, to like know that I might have to be a caretaker in the future. I really want to hold you right now. I wish, I wish that was the case too. Johnny's like, oh my God, that is no problem. Like I would do the same thing for my siblings. And I thought it was a very sweet moment. She was so relieved because it is a big ask. Like that's, some people can't handle that. I mean, he's your brother. Like I know that if the exact same thing happened with like my little brother or my little sister, I would be doing the exact same footsteps too. Yeah. I know I'm on the exact same page as you with this one. Okay, good. I'm glad to hear that. Back at the women's living quarters, AD confides in her friend Alejandra about Matt and how he's saying the exact same things he said to her to Amber. And let us not forget, he specifically told AD that she was the only person he was saying this to. Like he made it a point. And AD's fed up. She's like, I'm not going to let these guys play me. And so she's for a second considering Clay. Another big freaking red flag was Alejandra was like, well, you know, Clay does admit that he thinks he's a bad person, like he's a bad guy, but he wants to be better. And AD goes, oh my God, that's exactly my type. That's exactly the guys that I go for. You know, I'm Captain Save-A-Ho. And I would tell him like practice on me. Like, 
Oh my God, she was so funny when she said that. I appreciated that she was so honest and she was able to admit that, yeah, she likes to fix men. She's a fixer. AD goes into the pods with Matthew and she immediately confronts him. I've been hearing some things about you, Matthew, that you've been telling some other people the same things that you've been telling me. And he knew exactly who she was talking about. He was like, oh, you mean Amber? And she goes, yeah. And he lets out this big sigh. What I said was, man, this sucks. And she tells him, you made me feel so validated and so secure only to realize that you've been saying the same exact things to somebody else. And he goes, that's not true. What I said to you isn't what I said to her. The things I said to you were so much deeper. And then he goes, remember when I told you yesterday that I just wanted to call up my mom and tell her all about you? Well, I didn't tell Amber that. <laughs> really? Really? Tomato, tomato, okay? What he probably told Amber was, the first thing I wanted to do was to call my dad and tell him all about you. Like, literally, he's arguing over semantics. This is so dumb. She tells him, oh, I like you so much. I think about you all day, every day. I wake up thinking about you. I go to bed thinking about you. And he goes, me too. Every time I talk to you, my heart feels like it's beating out of my chest. And then he says some weird crap about how she's expecting this grand proposal from him and he wants to give it to her. Actually, did he even say that? He said he was very manipulative and weird with his words because he was like, I know you want this grand proposal and you're expecting me to propose to you that way, right? The moment would be one of the greatest moments of, of your life. And you thought that was gonna happen with me. You probably thought that the probability I would ask you was extremely high. You thought you had the guy who was gonna do it and you were sure. And then you may get to the end of this and somebody doesn't even propose. Like what? I was so confused. And then he goes, remember I said I wanted to leave with you yesterday? There's a reason why I said that. Okay, what is it? He just kept talking in nonsense and not answering his questions. It was like, it was so frustrating. And then he's... And then he said something about how he didn't want to give her an ultimatum, but blah, 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 blah. Like, what? Was he implying that he wanted her to leave with him and not complete the show? I, I don't know. I just needed more context. I feel like there was a lot that wasn't shown, um, probably cut out, and I was so confused. So if anybody understood what they were talking about, let me know in the comments. Now, I'm not giving you an ultimatum. I wanted to leave with you yesterday. You did want to leave with me yesterday. Okay. Do you think I said that to her? Did you? No, I didn't say that to her. I think if I broke it off with the other people and I came back to you tomorrow, I hope you would be ecstatic. And then he goes, if I had to make a decision right now, it would be you. I choose you. I mean, he said a whole lot of nothing or a lot of bullshit that confused me. If I were her, I would have ended things with him right then and there. He's too shady. He's manipulative. And he just talks around in circles like he cannot be trusted, period. But she seems genuinely conflicted. Like, I don't know what it is about him that has her in such a... A, a love spell, but she has her blinders on and she does not know how to take them off. So that's how they end their date. And then Clay comes into the pod to have his date with AD. And the first thing he does is apologize to her about focusing so much on her physical appearance. And he wants to really build that emotional connection. Now, I was surprised that he apologized. I'm going to admit I was not expecting that from him. Um, So that made me think, wow, he must really like her. We'll see about that. Because then she says, this was such an emotional roller coaster. And he goes, what do you mean? And she tells him that she made a connection with another guy. And she just found out that that guy made another connection with someone else. And how he's been telling the both of them the very same things. And she's hurt. And Clay goes, okay, what does that have to do with me? This has nothing to do with me. Like, do you like me or not? Are you not feeling me or are you are? Because what you just told me has nothing to do with me. Oh my God, I'm so shocked. Like, I can't handle this. And then he gets up and then he starts pacing around the room, going back and forth, just walking around. Okay, dude, chill, okay? He's so upset. He's trying to keep calm and carry on, but he can't help it. He's like, okay, who is this guy? 
And she goes, oh, it's Matthew. And he goes, Ma- Ma- Matthew? Who's Matthew? Oh, who's Matthew? Ma- we don't have a Matthew. That guy? Well, what love triangle am I in? We could have that transparent convo. It's me and you and Matthew. Matt, I don't even, Matthew? Oh, hell no. You're gonna group me in with that loser? I'm competing with Matthew? Do you even like me? And she goes, yeah, of course I do. I just had a stronger connection with him. And he's so offended. Like, so offended. Like, Matthew is such a peasant. Okay. You're gonna regret that shit. I'm, I'm telling you, hey, like, 80, like, that, I really can't even fathom. You like me, but you don't like me like that. You're trying I to do keep... like you like that. AD, I'm telling you, it's not seeming like that, girl. I'm like, he's still pacing around, going around and around, and then he stops and he holds the sofa and he goes, Man, this is such a hit to my ego. Wah, wah, wah. Go freaking cry about it. Oh my God. He keeps complaining about how this is making him feel so bad. It's all about me, 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 me. He does not once ask her how she's feeling. Because remember, she just told him how she was hurt. Okay? She just found out some really bad information about her other guy. And the only thing he can say is, oh my God, my ego, I'm hurt. How could you do this to me? I can't believe he's competing with me. Like me, 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 me. So he's like, you know what? I need you to think about this and we'll talk again tomorrow. And that's how their day ends. By the way, someone wrote in the comments in my last video that they're worried for me because I didn't catch the severe love bombing from Matthew. And to that, I'd like to say, you're absolutely right. Because honestly, it's something that I've noticed about myself as well. When I watch these dating shows, I do not see the love bombing. There's a 98% chance that I'll miss it. And instead, I'll see it as something dreamy and passionate. I could never be on one of these dating shows. I'd miss all the red flags. I'd be so blind. I would put the blind in love is blind. Then AD goes back to the women's living quarters and basically she and Amber have a conversation and they find out about Matthew and how he's been telling both of them the same exact things and Amber starts to cry. She shook and she apologizes to AD and says, I'm so sorry for taking that moment away from you, which was so unnecessary. She did not have to apologize. AD and Amber have a really nice moment. They hug and Amber goes, I can't do this anymore. I'm going to leave. And she leaves. Now, in the men's living quarters, Matthew is still by himself and Clay is with his group of friends and Clay tells all his little buddies about Matthew. And everybody's shook. They're like, Matthew? So you're telling me that AD likes Matthew? Matthew talks? We've never heard him talk. He has feelings? We can't imagine him having these emotional thoughts and feelings. Matt. Bro, this guy never talks. Like, I can't even imagine him having any type of emotion like combo and how it's going. And like, that was like a big blind side for me. And I was kind of like on a high horse. And now I'm definitely like kind of got a little bit humble. So Clay's like, yeah, man, I cannot believe that she put me in the same group as Matthew, that loser. And he looks at his friend and he's like, I mean, if I were competing with you, I would understand because I I respect you, man. But Matthew, look at him. Ugh. (laughs) One thing I don't like doing is having competition with, like, other men that I don't think is of mine. Like, I'm sorry, like, yeah. Listen, I do not like Matthew. I really do not like him. But to see Clay act like he's so much better than him, it just irked me. It just bothered me. I'm like, Clay, sit the f*** down, okay? You're not that great either. We have a new couple, Kenneth and Brittany, and it's really cute because he's a school principal and she's a school teacher. Isn't that cute? Adorbs, right? They're also both Christian and they both lost a parent at a very young age. So they share this trauma. They actually basically trauma bond. Brittany has a pretty incredible story, so I just quickly wanted to share. So her mom was a twin and she had a twin sister named Karen. And when they were 29 years old, Karen died in a car accident. She flew out of the car. The car ran over her and that's how she died. And her mom always wanted kids. And so when she tried and tried, she miscarried one after another, just miscarriage after miscarriage after miscarriage. And then she finally had Brittany and Brittany was born on her and her twin sister Karen's birthday. Isn't that pretty incredible? And so Brittany has the same birthday as her mom and her sister Karen. So they they celebrate together every year. I thought that was like so sweet. That whole story just speaks to the power of God. 
Amen. Keep on staying consistent with liking me now. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. I got you. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna hold you to it. I thought Kenneth and Brittany had great chemistry. Now, I don't know if either of them are uh, sharing connections with other people, but we only saw Kenneth and Brittany together on this episode. So I'm looking forward to either seeing them together, like choose each other, or I'm looking forward to seeing like if they share connections with anybody else and comparing them. Johnny and Amy have another date and he accidentally tells her that he loves her and it was so cute. Uh, they were both blushing and giggling and it was really, really adorable. And then they tell each other that they love each other and it was super, super cute. The one thing I do want to do is I don't want to change you. I don't want to change you at all. I like you. Like, I love you. Like... <laughs> What? <laughs> Amy, I do love you. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, does anybody feel like Amy looks like uh, Catherine McVie and a teenage version of Kendall Jenner? Because that's all I see when I look at Amy. We get our very first engagement. Johnny proposes to Amy and Amy accepts. Chelsea and Jimmy have another date and he apologizes to her for reacting the way he did when she told him about her divorce and she apologizes to him for getting super emotional and awkward and they talk it out and they're good now. So they're chatting, they're getting to know each other some more and then oh my god you guys I am cringing already like my butt is clenching because <laughs> all of a sudden she's like by the way does anybody tell you that you look like any celebrity? And he goes, oh, yeah, yeah, I've heard that. What about you? And she goes, oh, my God, I get it all the time, especially when I'm at airports. People tell me all the time that I look like this one specific lady. And he's like, oh, who? And she goes, um, oh, God, who, who's that? Oh, what's her name? That 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 girl, um, MGK's wife or girlfriend. I think Jimmy just creamed his pants because he was like, Megan Fox? And Chelsea's like, oh my god, yeah, that's her, yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't think I look like her at all. I think it's because I have dark hair and blue eyes like her. But like I hear her all the time, like everybody tells me that I look exactly like Megan Fox. But I don't see it, so please don't get excited. Girl, why would you say that? I do too. All the time on the plane, I get one person. And it's just because I have dark hair and blue eyes. Say it. <laughs> it's a... Uh... I don't even know if it's MGK's wife or her, his girlfriend. Megan Fox. I just cannot believe she said that. When she said that, my jaw dropped. I was expecting her to be like, just kidding. Even if I thought I looked like Megan Fox, I would not tell anybody that people tell me that I look like Megan Fox or that I think I look like Megan Fox. Like, no, it's kind of like when you're on a dating app, you want to set the expectations low to the ground so that when they see you in person, they're super surprised and they're happy. Chelsea telling him that her celebrity doppelganger is Megan Fox is like you putting a super facetuned photoshopped picture on your dating app. And then when the guy sees you in person, He's just going to be disappointed. This is not to say she's not attractive. She is so pretty. Chelsea is a beautiful girl. Okay, but it's just common sense. You don't compare yourself to like one of the hottest celebrities. Oh my God, I hope they do not choose each other because we are going to see his disappointment in his face because he does not have a poker face. Oh my God, look at Jimmy right now. Look at that dude. He is prancing around in his pod thinking about Megan Fox. He's in heaven. He's imagining himself with a Megan Fox lookalike. All right, so next is Jimmy and Jessica. And Jessica cries because she misses her daughter so much and she tells him more about her and she goes on and on and on and on about Autumn and it's very sweet. I don't know how she held it in for so long when she could go on and on about her daughter. Uh, but then we learn more about her past and her upbringing. This was also a crazy story. So both of her parents were addicts and right after she was born, her dad went to prison. And so she lived with her mom until she was about four years old and then her mom went off the deep end. And so Jessica ended up in foster care for a couple years and then her dad got out of prison. So then she went back to live with him for about a year and then he died by unaliving himself. My goodness, I can't even imagine all that trauma for a child. 
Oh, God. So then after her dad died, she went back into foster care and then eventually met her current parents when she was 16 years old. They adopted her. But remember, she got pregnant when she was 17, a minor. So technically, she was still in custody of the state. And therefore, if she had stayed in foster care, she would not have had custody of her daughter. Isn't that crazy? And on top of all that, like a lot of people don't adopt adult kids. They want babies, like infants, like the younger the better. I can tell Jessica really likes Jimmy, but I just don't know how Jimmy feels. He's very hard to read. Then Trevor and Chelsea go on a date and he's all in. He only has eyes for her. And I really like them together so much more than I like her with Jimmy. I don't even really like her with Jimmy. When she's with Trevor, she's so goofy. She's playful. She laughs a lot. Like he makes her laugh so much. And Jimmy does not make her laugh. But I could be very surprised. You might have like a mullet. <laughs> you can see? Wait, are you lying? Mm. I am a sucker for a mullet. And if you're joking with me, I'm gonna be pissed. <laughs> I, yeah, I have mullet. <laughs> you're such a liar. I swear to God. <laughs> now back to AD. She's thinking and thinking and thinking and she realizes Matthew is really good with his words and he's a very good talker and he's been playing on her emotions this whole time. She's been very vocal about how she really wants to be proposed to and she wants love and hope and dreams and emotion and he's been playing on that. And at one point she even says he throws me in this loop and I don't know how to get out because he just goes on and on and on. So AD and Matthew are in the pods and I still don't know what AD's about to do. Is she going to break up with him or is she going to get back together with him? I don't know. But uh, they're in the pods and he goes, you know Amber left, right? And she's like, yeah. And then she hears him sniffle and she's like, are you crying or are you sick? And then he leans in to the sniffling and then he continues to sniffle and then he acts so sad and he's like, you know, I never felt this way about anybody else before and I know you want this grand proposal. Uh, America loves an underdog and I'm that underdog and I think I have America on my side. I'm like, what is he talking about? I just shut your mouth, okay? I'm so but I, I'm so over Matthew. AD's roll in her eyes and she's not her sweet bubbly self like she normally is. And he catches on and he's like, you're not talking to me like you normally do. I can tell you don't like me anymore. So I'm done. What? I just don't like the way that you sound today. I don't think you really want to do it with me. Do you feel like you've had another connection with somebody? Um, yes. I think you're an amazing person, but mm -hmm. it's not fair to you that I can't commit to the plan that you want, so I'm done. So he clearly would have chosen Amber in the end after feeding AD all those lines. He goes on and on and on about some bullshit. He's like, I really cared about you. I meant everything I said. And he keeps sniffling and she's like, are you sad because Amber left? And he says, yes. He goes, yeah, I broke somebody's heart on national television. And she's like, w what about mine? Am I freaking chopped liver? I got my heart broken too. But he doesn't see it like that. And he leaves. He walks out. He's going to go find Amber. What the freak? What just happened? Oh my God. You sound devastated. Is it because Amber's gone? Yeah, I feel like I broke somebody's heart on national TV. Some, just, you've... America's gonna be watching. Okay, Matthew. Well, I'm gonna head out. Okay. Well, good riddance. Goodbye, loser. Now we're at the end of episode two. And remember I told you guys Johnny and Amy got engaged? And now it's time for them to meet face to face. But I'm also nervous too. This always makes me so nervous. Like I feel like I have 50 prickly things up my asshole and I just get so anxious because I'm so worried that they're not gonna like each other when they see each other because that has happened on the show, you guys. And also the secondhand embarrassment is so real, okay? So it's time for them to meet face to face and they're both standing behind each wall. They're waiting for it to open and reveal the other person on the other side. They're both anxious, nervous. Their hands are sweaty and finally the walls open and the episode ends <laughs> 
So yeah, we're not going to see their reaction to each other until episode three, which I am going to watch right after I edit this and post this, y'all. What did you guys think of this episode? I'm so glad Matthew's gone. But I can't help but to wonder, what would AD have done? Would she have chosen him? I think it's obvious he liked Amber more. And if she were still here and he had to choose between AD and Amber, he would have chosen Amber. You know what upsets me though? Why didn't the editor show us footage of their dates? with Matthew and Amber. I would have loved to see their conversations. I would have loved to hear what he was telling Amber. But we didn't get any of that. And I understand why, because they wanted to surprise us uh, about Amber and AD. But like, after we found out, couldn't they include some clips, include some flashbacks? I know they have the footage. Why not show us some of the footage? Oh, I'm so upset. Okay, so here are the rest of the couple that I'm predicting. A.D. and Clay, Jimmy and Jessica, Trevor and Megan Fox. Oh, I mean, Chelsea. Oh my God, I hope she didn't tell Trevor that she looks like Megan Fox. Although honestly, I feel like Trevor wouldn't care. Like if he saw her in person and she didn't look like Megan Fox, I don't think he would care. I think he would just like let it roll off his shoulders. Whereas Jimmy would care. He would be disappointed. Wouldn't it be so funny if Trevor were like, a lot of people tell me that I look like Wreck-It Ralph. Because... <laughs> <laughs> to me, when I see him, he reminds me of Frigate Ralph. All right, well, that's it for the episode two recap. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments and come back tomorrow for episode three. Bye!